Leading counseling and therapy groups often involves the most complex set of skills in group leadership. It's important to note that the goals of counseling and therapy groups are usually boiled down to two types. Outcome goals, referring to changes outside the group member's life, and process goals, referring to goals pertaining to the group process. Process goals can be very important in certain kinds of groups, and sometimes therapy groups focus primarily on process and sometimes on outcome. In our examples, we emphasize outcome goals, helping people change the way they are thinking, feeling, and living. In this first demonstration, it's the fourth session of a group of people in recovery. The leader demonstrates a number of techniques that can be used to involve everyone. Also, the leader deals with a reluctant member. I just don't deserve to be happy because of how I was when, you know, I was on my addiction. Um, I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I took money from my parents. I left my kids when they were babies in the house by themselves when I went to, like, you know, go get drugs. And I, you know what, I'm just going to ask you, hold there for a second. I was wondering okay. if you'd be willing to do something with the group because I'd really, I know this cycles for you and I'd really like us to be able to help Lauren. Were you all willing to do that mm -hmm. with Lauren for a minute or two? Yeah. Okay, Lauren, here's what I'd like you to do. Okay. I'd like you to make those two statements. I'm a bad person. I don't deserve to be happy to each of the group members, one after another. Okay, start here with Eric and look at him and say that. And then Eric, I'd like for you to respond back to Lauren, the truth. Okay. You're not a bad person, you do deserve to be happy, or whatever it is, you know, your version of that, okay? okay? But you state what it is, I'm a bad person, I do not deserve to be happy. I'm a bad person, I don't deserve to be happy. That's not true. You deserve to be happy. I'm a bad person, I don't deserve to be happy. You're not a bad person. You very much deserve to be happy. I'm a bad person. I don't deserve to be happy. You're not a bad person, and you definitely deserve to be happy. I'm a bad person. I don't deserve to be happy. It's not true, and you do deserve happiness. How many of you have all ever been in the space where Lauren is right now? Only totally. Yeah. And, and a lot of it, I don't know, for some of you, did it come down to that self-forgiveness, that forgiveness of self for some of the things that you did do while mm. you were in your active addiction? Yes. The forgive, because it just sounds like to me that that forgiveness piece hasn't come mm, no, to you yet. No, no. Yeah. And you're focusing on what you did and then you conclude something about yourself as a result and there's no forgiveness whatsoever. A lot of times it's easier for us at first to forgive somebody else or how they look mm -hmm. back at you and said, hey, you're not a bad person. That can we see through the eyes of someone else. I'm just wondering, looking at back for yourselves, where are you on a scale of 1 to 10? With 10, you've got it. You've forbid, you forgive yourself. You're okay with it. And 1, not at all. And I'm just kind of guessing you're a 1, Lauren. Mm -hmm. Where would you rate yourselves as far as the forgiveness goes? I, I, if you don't, I, oh, I, I'm like at a, I'm at about a five right now. Okay. I realize that some of the stuff I did to to get her when, um, when I was in my addiction. I mean, I was in active addiction. I mean, that's what when you're in active addiction, that's what you do. So, I mean, I'm starting to get it. I mean, and did you start where she is, down oh, at one? Or I was a zero. zero. Okay. Was a zero. Okay. And really that's what group can do, is try to help us move up that scale. That's good. So, someone else, where are you, what number are you as far as self-forgiveness goes? I'm about a seven. I absolutely started at like a negative 100. Okay. You know, until I came in here, started working the steps, and really got myself in a space where I could say, okay, that was then. And those were the choices that I made out of a place of sickness. And now I can make some different choices. Till I got there, absolutely, I was awful. I was worthless. Yeah. There was nobody that was ever going to love me again. And I didn't deserve my children. Those were all true for me.
And, and you know, I'm going to come back to this love, connecting that love piece with mm -hmm. forgiveness too, so I'll, I'm going to hold back on that. How about for you, Morgan? What's your number as far as self-forgiveness now? Today, probably a six, but it fluctuates, especially when I see those people that I hurt. Because when mm -hmm. I see those people that I hurt, then it's like, I'm, I'm down, back down at zero. Then it's like, look, you see the pain, everything that I've done to you, you know, and then I'm like, you know, all the things that I put you through, I don't deserve to be happy at all. So then the number goes, Then boom. the number just plummets. So then it's like I got to talk myself through it again, like, okay, that was a different person. Like, and that's kind of the only way I can really think about it sometimes as separating, this was a different person, this was not me. If I wasn't on drugs, I would have never done those things. Mm -hmm. So it's just realizing that we had no control. And remember, we talked about recovery is that change piece. Abstinence you all have plus change equals recovery, and that change is a process. Sometimes it's one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. JP, would you like to? Is it add? okay if I pass? Absolutely. If you feel more comfortable passing on this, that's right. sure. Add yeah. whatever you like. Well, I think one of the things that I've found is, like when she was saying, like fluctuating. Sometimes I forget about the process. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I didn't just automatically be get into heroin and like full blown like fiend. It was a process to get there too. I mean, you know. And recovery is a process as well. Mm -hmm. Healing's a process mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. There's a a lot of you know just beating up on ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing as not forgiving ourselves. And, and it doesn't, that's what the addiction did, was beat up on ourselves. You know, I, I bring, you know, we've, we use these props sometimes just to drive it home. And, and I just think that you beat up on yourself when you were using, you know, just beat the heck out of yourselves. And, and you know, it just, it doesn't. And now that this is gone, okay, it's kind of like this is still there. Go ahead and grab a hold of that, Lauren. And you almost have this up. Yeah. Is that what it feels like? Yeah. yeah. And when you all were at that one, is that when you just constantly walked mm -hmm. around? So even though the booze and the drugs are gone, that hammer's still there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a good idea if we just keep working on being able to put this hammer down. That's the, the, the focus of group can be is how do we get this hammer down? Okay. I'm just going to see it. I just want to, what's one thing that you think you could do today, Lauren, or something we can, that you could put that hammer down, just while we're in group for the rest of the day. I guess just what Morgan said, that that wasn't who I was. I wouldn't have made those actions if, if, if I wasn't. Okay, put the hammer down. Get it up, play again. In this example, the leader got members involved while working with one member. She used the round to involve others and to get the member to go deeper into her thoughts. When a leader is able to get a member to do some deep personal work, the other members usually find it very helpful, either in trying to help the working member or in going deep into their own thoughts about a similar issue. Heidi stayed with the working member for a few minutes and then moved the group to a meaningful discussion about forgiveness. The next demonstration illustrates our model of therapy in groups, whereby the leader sometimes works with one member. It's the third session of a therapy group, and the leader works with one person on an emotionally laden issue and involves the other members. Let's watch. You said you would wanted to talk about something? Well, it's something that it's... It's really hard for me to talk about with people and, and really hard to, to kind of say it out loud, but I'm just such an awful, awful mother. I, I killed my baby. What do you mean? Um, I was running late for work and I was just rushing out of the house and, um, you know, just running, grabbing things, and I had my coffee and just wasn't really paying attention. And I went and I got in the car and um, ended up running over my, my son. Um, well, I how just, long ago was this? It was about 10 years ago. Well, 
and you don't forgive yourself. It oh, I mean, how could I? I mean, it's what kind of mother runs over their child, you know? Like, go ahead, Jen. I mean, you make it sound like it was purposeful. It wasn't. This was an accident. And yeah, you said you killed your son. And it, you didn't kill him. It was an accident. Well, I mean, <coughs> it was an accident. I mean, it, it just in the the rush. I mean, we had a screen door that wouldn't always shut. Like when you shut it. And I thought he was safe inside the house and just came out, you know, like the door didn't shut all the way and he was running out and following me and that, I just didn't see him, but I did kill him. Like, okay. mm. Morgan, what do you think? I mean, it's, it's tragic and it's terrible, but you didn't do this on purpose and you got to stop beating yourself up about it. Yeah, I think you just explained it kind of. I mean, I know that because you said well, you thought he was in the house and just the screen door, you know? Hey, um, you said you've got to stop beating up on yourself. I just don't know. How, how. Is, would y'all agree with that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been 10 years. Going back to that model, remember the model we used about self-talk? What do you tell yourself? I'm a terrible Awful. mother. Awful. Do y'all think she's a terrible mother? What do y'all think? No, seriously. Raise your hand if you think she's a terrible mother. Why are you? Look at the looks on their face. Why do you think Megan's got this look on her face? Why do you? Why don't you think she's a terrible mother? Seriously. Something terrible happened, but you're not a terrible mother. I mean, yeah. I just exactly. Yeah. I mean, but wouldn't I mean, a good mother have looked? You know, like a child. Stop! Is, stop! You can't stop! Beat I mean, up how many of you in here? Some of you have kids, right? How many of you in here have been in a hurry and something like this could have happened? Raise your hand. Yeah. I you just, you had the worst thing possible happen. I drove home one time, got all the way home and realized I had forgotten to strap my son in. I mean, if I had stopped short, if, you know, someone had my light, I easily could have killed him. Didn't strap him into the... Into the car seat. seat. Mm -hmm. You know, accidents happen, and luckily, in my situation, you know, I got home and everything was fine, but that could have ended so terribly. Is she a terrible mother? No. But mothers she, are supposed to hang protect. On, just listen. Is she a terrible mother? Absolutely not. Is she a terrible mother? Of course not, no. What do you think as you listen to them? I... I want to believe it, and I, I want to be able to set it down, but it's just, it's so hard, you know? I mean, he was so young and mm -hmm. looked to me right. for, like, okay. protection for everything, and I'm the one. Let me know? say it to you, but I want to say it to all of you. If you've got anything in your life currently that is unfinished, unsettled, like this, I mean, I don't know, I don't think, I know none of you have something like this, I don't think. But y'all might have something. It's it's how do you get rid of? Do y'all believe she deserves to be happy? Yes, yeah. of course, absolutely. Even though she did this, mm -hmm. why? I remember. I, go ahead. I just remember when, you know, our youngest was, um, you know, first born. Like we we don't we didn't get any sleep. And I can't tell you how many times we probably had near misses. I mean, you know, thank God nothing happened, but like I could very easily see myself having been in your shoes. How do we help you? What do you need to do? And y'all think of this. What does she need to do? And if, if you can't answer it, I'm going to ask them to. What do you need to do to get over this? I'm not quite sure how. Go ahead, Jen. What is she, what in your mind, what does she need? I think she needs to forgive herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. As we said earlier, when the focus is held on one member, a skilled leader usually involves the other members in an active way. And so doing it keeps other members interested. And it's often therapeutic for members to help a fellow member. In this example, Ed knew it was therapeutic for the working member to hear from others and see their reactions. Next, we see another example of Ed working with a topic that's relevant to all the members.